A few days ago, I had a 90-year-old COVID positive patient who was admitted in one of my wards and uh, she was there for almost a week. And yesterday, she succumbed to the illness and she passed away. Um, now, a day before she passed on, we found out that her son, who was also tested positive, was in the same ward that she was admitted in. And nobody knew and both of them didn't know either. So the son didn't even know that his mother was admitted in the same ward because the ward is huge. We have so many patients. Everyone is placed everywhere. They were admitted at different times. So nobody just walks around in the ward and looks at other patients. It just so happened that the son, I don't know, wanted to get some water or something and walked across his cubicle and then he happened to find his mother there. This is a 90 year old frail sickly old lady with a lot of health problems so obviously she wasn't a good candidate who was going to survive the infection um, and there was no one beside her to take care of her to feed her um, you know we have nurses going in and out um, at different scheduled times and there's only so much they can do and I wish we could have done more or you know at least place the mother and son side by side you know so that they could take care of each other I guess he only had a day to spend the last moments with her so I called one of her granddaughter or something and to inform the bad news and I also told her that hey you know what your other family member which is say the patient's ex and the patient ex's son was also admitted in the same ward and she told me she's like oh if that's the case can you please find in your hospital whether there are two others who are admitted and I searched our system and it happened to be that both of them were admitted in our hospital but in a different ward and there were a total of five family members admitted in the same hospital for being COVID positive. None of them knew that each other was admitted in the same hospital. They didn't have phones. Most of them were elderly. Um, the family members at home didn't know this. And it was just, it was just so hard to comprehend when we found out that none of them got to spend time with each other um, one of them passed away the grandmother passed away the uncle and the auntie is not doing very well the younger ones maybe will survive it it's a situation where so close yet so far and there was nothing we could do because by the time we found out a lot of them were already in a very late stage and I think this is so sad, but that's the situation it has come to now. That so many people are tested positive and it's so hard to get a hold of who is where. And sometimes you don't even know how they're doing. You don't know if they're recovering. The last time you see a family member is probably when they are being taken to the hospital and you, you don't know whether that's the last time that you're going to see them. And then we started finding out that these five family members don't live in the same house and they're not within five kilometers of each other's house. They said that, you know, they did have some sort of family gathering um, for someone's birthday or something. Now, see, this is the problem in the country right now. Everyone thinks it's okay to just visit for a while or I'll just go and see my friend for 10 minutes or I'm just going to pass this over to my neighbor's house or, you know, I'm just going to go to my aunt's house to just collect some documents. Now, we are seeing daily cases of 8,000, 9,000, 11,000. We are not in a position where we can cater to the numbers anymore. Our demand is far more than what we can supply. We have not enough wards, we have not enough beds, we have not enough space to put patients. We've got hundreds of patients waiting in the emergency department, waiting for a bed for days. I've heard stories of patients waiting for a bed in the ED until they collapse, dying in the ED before they even get a bed. I've heard of patients coming with their whole families, with children, with teenagers, with babies who are tested COVID positive. I've heard of pregnant women coming in and out of the hospital trying to be tested because someone they know or someone they saw have had symptoms or have been tested positive. We've seen elderly, frail patients who are, you know, deserving of proper health care, not being able to get proper health care because we don't have the resources. And I don't think people understand how serious this is. It has come to a point where we are choosing people. And when I say choosing is that we are choosing who to give our resources to. We are choosing who we can save. We are choosing who to provide the ICU backup. We are choosing who we can ventilate. If you know how COVID-19 works, it basically suppresses your respiratory system. And those who are in severe categories 4 and 5, they need oxygen support. And that's what we don't have. We don't have enough oxygen supplies. We don't have enough ventilators. We don't have enough ICU beds if patients are ventilated. We don't have enough of a lot of things. And if the numbers keep rising or if the numbers even stay this high for long, I really don't know what's gonna happen. I'm sad to say this, but 
it comes to a point where we have to choose younger, healthier patients with less health problems. We have had patients dying when they are not supposed to be dying. I had a colleague whose father was tested COVID positive and admitted in a different hospital to where we are working. And when the hospital team contacted my colleague to ask about, you know, the direction of care, how much of an active resuscitation are we supposed to do? My colleague's father is about 70 something, 71, 72. And after the whole conference was over, this is what she told them. If it comes to a point where he collapses or he succumbs to the illness, she told them not to resuscitate or she told them not to give him priority for a ventilator. There are so many younger ones, so many more patients that probably will benefit from a ventilator compared to a 70 year old man with multiple health problems. So no, if he collapses, save the ventilators for the better candidates, for the young ones. I know how hard this must have been for her and how much of pain she would have gone through to even to even come to such a decision. But this is what it has come to. We are thinking of those who are better candidates and who will survive. Um, and we're giving them opportunities to survive. Not because we want to, but we don't have a choice. I don't think the public will ever understand until you go through such a situation yourself. And I think all of my colleagues right now are very overworked, they're exhausted. We are going through what countries like Italy, um, India, uh, China went through, you know, before 2021. We are going through that right now and I don't think that there is any hope left unless the numbers come down. And I really don't know how else to do it except for just staying at home. We are still getting patients coming in COVID positive, contracted from some colleague, some friend, some family member, you know, why are people still out and about? I don't understand. Everyone who comes in says that, you know, oh, I went here or I went there, I, I traveled, um, I, I have a METI letter, you know, I, I have an approval. I don't understand. Why does everyone have a METI letter? Why is, why is everyone still moving around? I know a lot of people say that, oh, I managed to surpass the roadblock, you know, or there's no roadblocks around here, but that shouldn't be why you're staying at home. It's immaterial whether there is a roadblock or not. I think it's our personal responsibility to just stay at home. It's so easy to point fingers and just say this person didn't work or this system failed or you know these rules and regulations were not placed when it was supposed to be placed. It's easy. But what are we doing though? Like we as the people, it's our responsibility to flatten the curve, to basically curb this problem and I don't think we're doing enough or I think we're taking it too lightly because everyone is just out and about. At this point with such a high number, literally everyone around you is probably COVID positive. You just have to have that mentality that everyone is COVID positive until proven otherwise. Everyone, that friend that you saw, you know, in your neighborhood, the grab driver who came to pass you your food, the neighbor auntie that you go for walks with, the delivery guy who brings your parcel, it's your friend that you try to sneak out and go out at 3 a.m., the lady that you saw at the park jogging, cycling, your friends, family, uncles, aunties, cousins, you know, anybody could be positive at this point. So you just have to stick with that mentality that everyone is positive until proven otherwise. So I think the only thing that we can do is just double up our protection, double masking, wear a face shield if possible, don't go out if you don't have to. At this point, literally, nobody has to go out. There's, there is nothing urgent enough for you to go out unless you are a frontliner or there is a huge emergency or someone is literally dying. Even then, they could be COVID positive. There are a lot of patients being brought in dead which is just sudden collapse a uh, sudden death and nobody knows why and when they're tested it's a covid positive case a lot of people are asymptomatic so it's not like before anymore where you're just afraid when someone sneezes next to you or someone coughs next to you now the person next to you who's just smiling happy feeling you know in the pinkest of health is probably covid positive so just stay away from everyone right now at least until the numbers reduce or at least we have a better solution to this problem. I know there are a lot of people who are very affected by this pandemic. I know that right now it's the public who's helping the others, you know, it's the people helping people and it's great because that's what we need right now because we're not having a lot of help from 
those who should have helped us and it's it's a great initiative but i think there are still a lot of ignorant people roaming around carrying the virus spreading the virus and until this stops i don't think this problem is ever going to end